For those of you who are just joining us here, this was a chase that started in Anaheim. Anaheim PD pulling over this driver in a possibly stolen car around noon here today. Anaheim PD has since pulled off and handed this over to the CHP. They have an airship overhead as well. We are on the eastbound 91 freeway. One person inside. And as we look at these live pictures here from News Chopper 4 Alpha, we see the uh, Toyota camera here being pursued by those officers. Very dark tent on these windows. But speeds relatively within uh, the range of... Uh, First at 60, 65, perhaps 75 miles an hour. He keeps uh, moving to the right lane there, so I'm wondering if perhaps he's going to try to exit. This is the uh, Washington no, Street exit, and he's going to do exactly what he did before. Mm -hmm. uh, pretended to exit and then just got right back on. And then if he continues on this 215, it will get him up to the 210. And, of course, eventually uh, the 215 comes to an end. It becomes the 15. That's the freeway that will lead us to Vegas. Hopefully, of course, we won't have to go that far. But uh, for now, uh, continuing here uh, on the northbound 215 in Colton. Yeah, it looks as if CHP has uh, crept up a little bit here in terms of uh, driving. This guy seems to be, you know, again, weaving in and out of traffic, uh, now hugging the, uh, the right side of the freeway, which was unlike what we saw on the 91 freeway not too long ago. So uh, it, perhaps he will try a, another one of those maneuvers where he attempts to exit the freeway, but then veers right back on. Yeah, and I think his intention was, with that is he's trying to trick the police. He thinks if I pretend to exit, they're going to follow me, and then I'll just make this move and get back on the freeway, and then it'll give me some room to get ahead. But he's tried it twice, and it hasn't worked. So we'll see if he uh, tries it again. But uh, he continues traveling here on the northbound 215 at approximately 75 miles an hour. He's now in the San Bernardino area, so he will be coming up to that 210 freeway very soon. So we'll see what he does when he gets there. But but if he uh, decides to continue on this 215, he won't be able to take it a lot further because it will become the 15 and eventually uh, it'll go through the Cajon Pass. So uh, we'll see what he does there. He's perhaps exiting here. Let's see. Well, he's he, doing that nope, again. Same thing again. Well, you know, so many different, there's so many vehicles behind him in pursuit now that even if one did follow him, the other three would still be on him. So yeah, like it seems. Three or four. I mean, we've right. seen a number of units there behind him. So this is his third attempt here to. Uh, play a game of cat and mouse here with the CHP, but it, it's not working. The driver appeared to be throwing something out of the window. We haven't seen much action uh, from that driver. Windows are up. They are quite tinted, as we see there. Again, so we don't know what uh, may or may not be happening inside. So, um, again, try that maneuver yet for a fourth time. <laughs> again. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but we, we have a number of CHP right behind, so they are sticking with this driver here as he attempts to trick the, uh, the CHP uh, off of the freeway. You know, what we're seeing now with this window rolled down, we can see the driver doesn't even have his hands on the wheel at times. Right now, it appears both hands are off the wheel. Well, that's very unsafe. Yeah, that's not wise. Especially at these speeds. Yeah, now, he just put his hand back up on the wheel. But, and here's uh, that something. He threw he, something he else just to throw now. something out of, uh, of the car. Uh, Carolyn, is it me or is there something on his nose? Yeah, hard to tell. I, it looks like he is wearing sunglasses, but it's difficult to tell if there's something as well on his nose. We appreciate your... Uh, you're, you, you being with us here this afternoon. And we want to get back to Eliana because it looks as if Eliana, uh, we, we need a location on this one. And we just saw yet again, I think this is the fifth attempt to mm -hmm. get off the freeway, but now remains back on the freeway. You would want a nice wide open street, kind of like the one we have here, with not a lot of traffic and not a lot of cars parked along the side of the road. And then the speeds of the vehicle need to be ideal, about 35 miles an hour. And the other thing, <laughs> wrong side of the road here, I'm sorry, I have to uh, stop my explanation and talk about this. The so wrong side of the road here, uh, that could have been very bad. Northbound here on Columbia, that CHP unit close behind. And red light coming up. Uh, that could have been very bad. Every time he runs one of these red lights or runs a stop sign, you run uh, into a situation where you could have cross traffic and potentially uh, have a traffic collision. So, whenever I see that that a uh, uh, whenever I see that an intersection is coming up like that, I'll make sure to pull out so that we can see the big picture. But you see the CHP unit close behind. Again, CHP units are all pit equipped. That means they're allowed to perform a pit maneuver if need be. This the size of this vehicle is perfect. Uh, is perfect for a pit maneuver because it is a relatively small vehicle. Uh, a CHP unit of this size maybe wouldn't try a pit maneuver on a larger vehicle. Maybe trying it here. Let's see. He tried the pit there. Didn't quite work. And trying it one more time. But he's able to wiggle his way out of it. Continuing here on Salmon River Road. 
UPS truck is going to be in the way, so let's see what happens. Oh, that could have been very bad. That is why the CHP unit didn't try another pit there because of that CH or because of that UPS truck. They of course didn't want to endanger the life of that UPS driver, so they decided not to try a pit there uh, as he was making that corner. Yeah, all units are backing off is what I'm hearing. That means that all units are going into surveillance mode. That means that the ground units are going to get pulled off and it's going to be a pursuit from the helicopter only. So the reason for that is that it just got too dangerous. Now that he's on surface streets, he's driving like a madman. And coming up to a red light here, oh, let's see what happens. Uh, fortunately, the light changed just in time. Continuing uh, here on Main Street with a cross of Stansel Drive. This is in the Riverside area. Your nearest freeways are going to be the 60 and the 215. He's going to have a chance here to get on the 60. Let's see if he takes it. Nope. He went right over his chance to get onto the 60 freeway. So he was not interested. Continuing here on Main Street, crossing Spruce Street. Picking up speed about 75 miles an hour. Exiting here, the 60. Exiting the 60 at Etiwanda. And making a turn. Oh, he got lucky. He made that turn just in time uh, before that big rig before that big rig uh, came up behind him. There's a lot of traffic here. Wrong side of the road here. Uh, that's why... Uh, oh, wrong side of the road yet again. Oh, this could be really bad. There's a lot of traffic here in the area. Van Buren and Etiwanda are going to be your streets as he comes under the train tracks here. Wrong side of the road. Oh, man. Can you imagine this guy just driving right at you at the speeds that he's traveling on? So dangerous. About 50 miles an hour here uh, on Van Buren. Again, with across the Venezuela. He's going to come right next to us, uh, but we'll uh, get him here as uh, we make this uh, as we make this move. Oh, lots of traffic coming up and at very high speeds. Uh, wrong side of the road. This could be very dangerous here. Van Buren and Etiwanda at about 55 miles an hour in the wrong direction. Uh, this is uh, this is probably one of the worst moves that this guy has made so far in the two hours that uh, he's been on this chase. Still on the wrong side of the road. And fortunately, other cars are seeing him. They're stopping. They're slowing down. Uh, because this guy's not stopping for anyone or anything. Continuing on the wrong side of the road. And really no reason for it. Because if you see the other side, the side he should be on, it's really not that slow. Uh, hopefully, uh, he'll be able to get back on the right side of the road here uh, coming up. But for now, continuing wrong side of the road, Van Buren and Belgrave Avenue. I think rural was the word that I was looking for. I couldn't find it. It's a little bit more of a rural area uh, in Mira Loma. Uh, very, close, uh, very close to the freeway if he uh, decided he wanted to get back on. But here we go. Wrong side of the road again. Oh, gosh. And absolutely no reason for it. There's no traffic uh, up ahead on uh, Harupa Road. He very well could stay on the right side of the road. Uh, but he uh, has been, uh, for some reason, crossing over to the wrong side and uh, coming up to another stop sign here. Of course, he's not going to stop there and uh, continuing here, Harupa Road and losing a little bit of control there. He hasn't hit a spike strip uh, during the course of this pursuit. The, uh, the police department did try to pit him. The California Highway Patrol attempted two pits, uh, but neither one of them worked. And uh, after that, that is when the uh, watch commander decided that it was best to go into surveillance mode 
which means that no units are going to be directly behind this guy, just the helicopter overhead. And for a time, it seemed like that worked. This guy really did slow, uh, slow, slow his roll, and uh, he even stopped a few times, uh, completely parked. But um, something uh, just spurred him to uh, continue driving like a madman, and that's basically where we're at right now. Coming up to the slower moving vehicle, this is a one-way road, uh, Harupa Road. Uh, near uh, Marlot Road in uh, Marlot Street, rather, in uh, in Miraloma. So he's going to go past the slower moving car into oncoming traffic, just kind of weaving in and out. <sighs> I'm just uh, it's seeing this guy, what he's doing, uh, endangering the general public. It's just so frustrating. It it really is just so dangerous to see him do that. And the police department already backed off. They said. You know, we don't want to, to endanger the general public. We're going to back off. We'll just let the helicopter follow this. Uh, but this guy simply, uh, he doesn't care. He's continuing on uh, driving uh, very erratically, not necessarily at high speeds right now, but very erratically, running through every stop sign, uh, running every red light. And, of course, uh, one of the most dangerous parts was when he was on the wrong side of the road uh, and was traveling at high speeds uh, for someone who was traveling uh, on the wrong side of the road at approximately 55, 60 miles an hour. Back on Etiwanda here, or crossing Etiwanda rather, fortunately got that yellow light there. Uh, still uh, on Harupa Road, just past Etiwanda. Those are going to be your two majors. And let's see what he does here. May just make a U-turn. So it looks like he's going to go back in the direction that he came. He's stopping next to this vehicle. I don't know if he's talking to someone. It looks like he may be talking to someone. It's unclear whether or not this person knows him. I really hope this isn't a situation where he's going to try to hitch a ride with this person. It seems like that person may have just been recording him. And yet makes another turn. So it's unclear what role that person may have played. May have just been a bystander who was, you know, who was aware of the pursuit and was recording uh, from his or her vehicle, or it could potentially be someone that this person knows. Uh, but fortunately, it wasn't a situation where this guy hitched a ride with that person. Back with you guys, uh, just uh, communicating with uh, with my wonderful pilot, Aldo Bentivenga, who has been uh, keeping us on top of this pursuit uh, the entire time. And uh, we were also communicating with our assignment desk, letting them know our fuel situation. We uh, have about 20 minutes left of fuel. But fortunately, uh, one of the great things about uh, us here at NBC is that we have uh, two helicopters. So we have uh, us in use chopper for Alpha, and then we have my uh, partner, Gil Levis, in News Chopper 4 Bravo. So Gil is actually launching uh, right now in our direction. And when he arrives on scene, uh, we will be able to pull off and uh, he'll be able to continue our coverage of this uh, now two hour uh, long pursuit that is uh, still here on Etiwanda, coming under the 60 freeway. I'm sorry, that's not the right vehicle. They, they look uh, somewhat similar. It's kind of difficult to tell. Uh, He's got a very, you know, nondescript uh, black vehicle, black Toyota, so it's uh, sometimes easy to lose him in the crowd. Uh, but as I was saying, a uh, new Chopper 4 Bravo is on its way, and uh, we'll uh, stay on this, of course, uh, as long as we can. Etiwanda and uh, Mission Boulevard. He 
he's uh, really slow here. I think this guy's got to be running out of fuel. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if his car dies at the intersection. Iberia Street and Etiwanda in Glen Avon is uh, where we have him now. You turning here? They got him. <laughs> there we go. I think uh, if I. Etiwanda and Iberia Street. That's I B E R I A. Iberia Street in Glen Avon. Etiwanda and Iberia. So I was just helping uh, to uh, direct uh, one of our ground crews who is uh, here in the area and will be able to bring us uh, some images from the ground uh, when this pursuit comes to an end. So okay, coming up to Edawanda, wrong side of the road. Oh, there was a spike strip. It did not work, and he just missed being hit by that silver vehicle. Wow. Okay, maybe it's coming to a stop here. And there he goes. He's running. You see him running there just behind this building running uh, with all he's got through this parking lot. Coming to the back side now. Uh, we're going to bring New Chopper 4 uh, Alpha around so we can get on the other side is the address. You see the police ship there. We lost him on the other side of this building. He should be uh, he either ran inside or he's, or, he, or he's hunkered down somewhere on this back side. Blue shirt, black pants. And we're looking for him. The airship's looking for him too. We, we all saw him run, uh, so we know he's here. But now it's just a matter of finding this guy. Uh, we have uh, just enough uh, to try to Go! 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 Where are you running from? Last time I'm telling you, go behind the units right now. Right now. If I touch you, you're going to jail. Summon desk. Looks like they're going to move the suspect.
there a medical? Is there a RA coming down the street for this guy? No? Okay. 